Hey everyone, we're going to see how to install Raspbian Linux on a Raspberry Pi device. So in this particular example, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 0W. Um, it doesn't really matter which version of the Raspberry Pi you use, um, but everything discussed in this particular tutorial is going to be around a version of a Raspberry Pi that contains some kind of wireless. doesn't mean that the, wire, the ones that don't have wireless won't work. Um, but there will be other steps that you need to do as well, uh, which I will not be covering. I'll also be only doing this for Mac. The steps will be similar for Linux, um, but not at all similar for Windows. So if you're on Windows, I'm sorry. You're going to have to look elsewhere uh, for help. Uh, but if you're on Linux, you might be able to get by. If you're on Mac, uh, it'll definitely align um, very perfectly. Um, so this example, I will be using Raspbian Stretch Lite. Um, it doesn't really matter which of the two you use, um, but I'll be using the light version. So go ahead and download either of the two, uh, and when it's done, extract it. It's already been extracted on my desktop, so we're ready to go. Um, so you are seeing my terminal. Uh, we're going to be doing everything from the terminal. Uh, you don't have to. There's other ways. Um, but you know what? This is convenient for me. We're, we're all DevOps, hopefully, or some kind of engineer, um, so this will uh, not be so difficult. Um, so the first step is we need to figure out uh, where our SD card is located. So it is plugged into my computer, but we don't know what it's called. So I can say disk util list, and that lists all drives connected to my computer. Now, uh, I know exactly the size of my uh, Raspberry Pi SD card, um, so that's a good thing. Uh, mine is a 64 gigabyte. Um, but if you have similar size drives, be careful, because if you end up wiping the wrong drive, uh, While well, there's no going back, you've probably lost all of your information. Um, so I know exactly which mine is. Mine's the, the disk 4. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to flash it, um, and then we're going to add our network information, and then we're going to plug it into the Pi and SSH. Uh, so the first step here is, well, uh, we want to unmount the boot partition. So we're going to say disk util unmount, and we're going to say dev disk 4 s1 and hit enter. The next step is we want to flash that image that we had downloaded. So we're going to say sudo. We need uh, a privileged um, command. This is a privileged command. So we're going to say sudo dd bs equals 1m. And we're going to say if, so input file, is going to be users, and reboy, desktop, and then uh, whatever the file is. So this is just the path to your image file. For the output file, OF, uh, we need to provide dev and then the disk. So I could say disk4 here. Um, it'll absolutely work. But instead, I'm going to say rdisk4. So disk4 uh, will be very slow, whereas rdisk will be very fast. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and execute this command. I'm going to enter my password. And I'm going to wait. Um, so on my machine, uh, I, I am using a fast uh, SD card. The SD card is fairly large, uh, but my computer and everything around it is very fast. So it takes about one minute to two minutes to complete this process. It'll be variable for you, um, so don't be alarmed if it takes upwards to 10 minutes. So it did finish. Um, the next step that we want to do is before we unmount it and plug it into our Raspberry Pi, we need to do a few things. Uh, so first of all, by default, um, SSH is not enabled on these Raspberry Pis. Now this is because Previously, people would install Raspbian, plug it into their network, um, and never change the default username and password, um, so they'd be open to malicious attacks later on. So by default, it's uh, closed off. Um, so if we, wanted, if we want to add SSH support, we would uh, CD into the volume, um, so it would be boot, and then we would say touch SSH, or in other words, create a file called SSH with no extension and nothing in it. Um, and this would be in the mounted volume called boot. Uh, the next step, now that SSH is enabled, is we want to provide a headless kind of setup for uh, network information. Uh, there are other ways to do this, um, but the easiest way is to provide a uh, network information file. So we can say, uh, and you can say, uh, let's go ahead and say uh, VI or Nano or whatever your editor that you wish to use is. And I'm going to say, uh, WPA supplicant dot conf. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to create a file 
called called what I just what I just mentioned with the following contents. Um, so we're going to say country equals US control interface equals DRR DIR for directory equals slash var slash run slash WPA supplicant group equals net dev and then update conf update configure sorry equals one uh, and then we provide it a wireless network so we're going to say network equals and we're going to say SSID equals PSK equals now um, I I'm not going to show you my SSID and PSK um, so let's uh, wait till the next screen but I will type it in and and exit out so I did go ahead and save that remember I didn't want to show you my my network information uh, but I by entered it in in those empty strings uh, so it'll be your SSID and your and your wireless network password um, but what we can do now is we can unmount the drive and plug it into our Raspberry Pi. So let's exit out of the drive before we try to unmount it. And we're going to say disk util unmount and it's going to be dev disk 4 s1 and yours might be named differently. So please definitely don't copy mine exactly. Look for what yours is what it what it actually is. So let's uh, unmount it. It's unmounted. Um, we can actually remove it from our SD card reader. So what I did was I took that my SD card out, I plugged it into my Raspberry Pi. Remember, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 0W in this example. doesn't really matter. I plugged it into my Raspberry Pi. My Raspberry Pi is booting. The first ever boot might take a minute or two. Um, remember, it's copying some configurations around. It's getting really initialized. Um, so let's give it a, a minute before we try to connect with SSH. Okay, I've given it about a minute. Let's go ahead and try to SSH into it. Let's clear this. So I'll say SSH, Pi is the username, Raspberry Pi.local is the host. Uh, remember, this is a Mac thing. Uh, Mac has Bonjour available. Um, so what we're actually doing is we're using the host name of the Raspberry Pi and we're connecting through that and it'll match it up to the network information. Um, otherwise, you'll have to know the IP address. Uh, which isn't a deal breaker, but it does make things a little more difficult. So you'll notice that it is asking for the fingerprint information. I'll just go ahead and accept it. I'll go ahead and enter my Raspberry Pi password. So it's actually Raspberry. And then just like that, I am now connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now it is recommending I change the username and password. Uh, that's up to you at this point. Uh, just follow the steps. But just to recap, what we did was we downloaded Raspbian. We flashed it to an SD card. Uh, we dropped in an SSH file as well as a WPA supplicant file for wireless network information. After we plugged it in, we tried SSH, and it worked as expected. Um, and this is the same results that you'll see when it comes to any Raspberry Pi with wireless. If you are looking to connect to a Raspberry Pi that does not have wireless, uh, you can still SSH to it, but there's some extra steps. I do have a tutorial on the Polyglot developer, uh, so just do a search for Raspberry Pi SSH USB, and it should pop up. And it's actually not too difficult to do, uh, but there are extra steps involved.